Lena. Nani? Yaki soba. Hana wa keda kaku utsukushi. Ika naru unmei no aranami ni honrou sare yo to. Keshite keda kasa o ushina wa ni ichirin no hana. Kiseki no otome ga ima karei ni saku. Dream Star Fighting Mighty God is in full swing, leading to their big summer pay-per-view. And the wonderful part of a new promotion is following them like a saga in a series. The new arcs are forming and dreams are coming true. Today, we shall dissect each wrestler and break down the plot like any good anime. Let's go! <laughs> other side. Dreamstar Fighting Mighty Goat had seven shows and the quality has been fire in my opinion. Before we truly begin, I have to give the highest praise to their camera production because the photography has been phenomenal through the simple use of a friggin' zoom. Could you believe it? They see a face and go, let's get the most cinematic shot possible. Like these shots are from a hard cam and they know how to frame subjects. It's professional, Marty. And even though good production is not necessary for me to love your company, choke a proud. I damn well appreciate. It's why I love AWG, and I'm glad to see this philosophy implemented, intentional or not. Just look at this action movie shot with Victoria Yuzuki wearing my face when I first fought the dancing lion in the Elder Ring DLC. Look at this shot here. Victoria is exhausted. You can hear the heavy breaths, like the brief respites in action scenes. And in the background, there's the action. Regardless of the content, this is a gorgeous shot. And repeat it again the next day when Yuzuki shows so much more physical acting. Only half a year in her career and she's a natural friggin' talent. My favorite spots in wrestling are submission spots. The wrestler having to crawl to the ropes. Express the sheer pain and the struggle. It's drama and suspense akin to a hero reaching for that object of hope to defeat the villain. And it's an incredibly important beat in the story of a dramatic wrestling match in my opinion. And Marty Gold is spoiling my love for these cinematic moments in the drama. You see every nuance of their face as they struggle to reach the ropes. Can Communicate to the ref, communicate to everyone with their fingers, their eyes, or even just the sheer confidence that they're fine. A simple finger wave. Nah, I got this. It speaks so much to the character, and I feel these spots are entirely overlooked by the wrestling community. I also have to point out that shades of yellow are my favorite colors, so the entire color palette of Mighty Gold is already a phenomenal visual aesthetic to please my eyes. I love colors. Colors in film is very much underrated. I always appreciate Zangy Mao films for this very reason. A strong sense of gorgeous color and deliberate design, be it red in Raised Red Lantern, or even just black and white like in Shadow. This is film. It's a visual medium. So is wrestling. A visual medium, but so much more. And what I love about Joshi in general is their fashion and the color scheme. The yellows of Mighty Gold played against the yellows of Yuzuki with the attire and hair, or the lines of gold on Komomo Manami, or anyone else. The shows themselves have just been the right length or something special for each of them. Julia starting each show off because Hongo injured herself and still delivered a hell of a performance. God damn, Julia. You can actually watch Julia's injury clear up by the eighth show. It would have been nice to have more build to her and Sairi's big major match and have her be like Julia God mode instead of civilian Julia, but you know, injuries happen. Let's get to it now. Utami Hayashista, this majestic beast, has been trying to find her groove again after losing the first main event and subsequent tag match. She would enter the passion zone of Nanai Takahashi, she who would enter the boss role that gives a ton of experience, win or lose, but if you do beat her, you get like five scattered tree fragments to level up. Get those scattered tree fragments, people, you need them for the DLC. Utami fought Takahashi and kicked out of her big moves. Finally putting away Nanai with the hijack bomb and handing her her first defeat. She won the passion back to fuel the next arc. A legit dream match as Utami Hayashisa will go against a surprising face. 
Io Sky. WWE has landed one of the legit best in the world to face a shock and highly emotional Tommy in what is going to be the most epic fucking match, a battle of Queen's Quest in foreign soil. I'm not going to pretend I've paid attention to anything Io Sky has done in WWE over the past three years, but more importantly, just how much it means to a Tommy to have this match. I'm happy for her, and I'm invested in the emotion behind it more than anything. Mirai, my MVP of Mighty Gold working her tailbone off. I've always loved Mirai's work, but she is especially inspired lately, and I've been enjoying every single moment. She even guided Kamomo Minami's debut match like she used to in TJPW, like the general she is. She's on a quest to become the first United National Champion of Mighty Gold, their white belt. Her roadblocks are Bozilla. This gigantic kaiju, the kaiju, and the ace of the actress girls, Miku Ono, both battling to a draw in a recent show and being granted a rare five more minutes where Mirai would have Miko down with a tight submission. But with time drawing thin, Mirai made the decision to lift her up and slam her down instead, but Ono still kicks out with this face and the perfectly timed zoom. They would draw one more time, leading to a rematch on the next show that was a mirror match, both targeting the knees and delivering massive bombs to each other with wonderful performances. But once again, ending in a draw and another five more minutes with much more sense of urgency from her eye. But again, they draw. They will face one more time at the pay-per-view to determine the winner. And I like how epic this feels and it really elevates Miko Aono. Miko Aono walked into Mighty Gold with a resume and expectations as a former champion leading a company and she is absolutely killing it. Her moveset alone will take her far and get her attention, utilizing the Styles class as a finisher to stand out. I love it. She is pretty, a great actress, shows lots of emotion and kicks very hard. Ace material. She has yet to take a pinball loss and her feud of Mirai has done wonders for her. A great example of making a new upcoming player. The other competitor, the one who truly made an impact immediately. Bozilla, only 20 years old with less than 30 matches to her name. This kaiju, the kaiju, plays her role so effectively. A larger opponent to toss these joshis around is always needed and the crowd has gravitated toward her. The way she commands the other white women around is hilarious. If she lacks anything, it's obviously experience, but as a tag wrestler, oh my god, she slays. And she's getting more confident with each and every appearance. Having a large kaiju, kaiju, for Mirai and Miko Aono to battle on the way to the right belt is exactly the type of antagonist needed, and Bozilla fills it immaculately. Nagisa Nozaki, the current seething beyond the sea tag team champion with this amazing entrance gear of the lights. I love her outfit so much. She's a really aggressive fighter with the kicks, the kicks, the kicks, like this kick that reminds me of pencil fighting back in middle school. She's currently serving the role of the lesser antagonist with a strong record and only one major loss to Bozilla during the opening round of the white belt tournament. A strong player to have on the roster and might even be underutilized a bit, as she's currently just a good hand and floating around despite her win record. The Superfly title is Madigo's high speed belt and his first champion will be determined, Misa Matsui, the speed star, my sentimental favorite of Madigo and someone who I am thrilled to see grow in popularity. It legit warms my heart. Misa Matsui is such a good performer, a phenomenal actress in complete control over her face to express drama and heighten emotions. She is just brilliant. I think the world of her, her offense is fast, precise, and she moves so uniquely, but it's her acting and emotion that I love the most, her fire and passion in her spirit. She is currently in the middle of her win-loss record, someone who has to work incredibly hard and utilize her size and speed to score victories. Her opponent is fellow actress, girls wrestler, and former AWG champion, Natsumi Suzuki. Oh, the big Suzuki! Former stardom talent and tag team partner to Kairi Hojo. Natsumi's experience, her speed, her technique, and her knees, the knees, that running knee attack. As much as I'm rooting for Mita Matsui, there's a good chance Natsumi Suzuki pulls away as the first champion. The one with the best record thus far is the Amethyst Butterfly, Kuki Amare, with a 100% win streak. Only Sari is beneath her with a single draw to her name. You can absolutely tell the promotion is high on this gorgeous dancing queen. Her Amethyst Butterfly is a thing of beauty. Still quite new and obviously so, but the upside is impossible to ignore. Despite her win success rate, she is currently floating around, just winning matches, being gorgeous, and showing off her aerial arts every appearance. But personally, I'm a fan of Go Chica. Oh, Go Chica! Hello, Go Chica! She always stops at the entrance and goes. 
Oh, Go Chica. I love the jacket, Go Chica. Goto Chica is straight up a crowd pleaser. I don't mean just in looks, but rather her offense consists of entertaining bits that stand out. Her butt attack utilizing the full ass is funny as hell. Like, oh. Ooh, the crowd loves her. She's great. She has fun. Her big swing gets better, but I personally love her physical acting, her expressions, and the passion she exudes. This moment here where she was clearly exhausted, but powered through to deliver a giant swing and just collapse in clear exhaustion. What a giga woman. I appreciate the effort always, Go Chica. She's currently involved in a personal feud against Victoria Yuzuki after fighting to a time limit draw against the youngster. It plays like a bigger sister versus little sister and both are incredible actors really going at it and selling this angle on the opposite end of the win percentage victoria yuzuki has not won a single match but has impressed me in every single performance i cannot believe this 19 year old rookie is only a half a year into her career she is seriously good her physical acting is so wonderful she's a very talented performer and i cannot 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 get over how victoria yuzuki is a bow build Now bow down your commoners, I mean, I mean, bow down your commoners, bow down, bow down, it's time, you've been waiting, I couldn't talk about our ladyship right away, I need that watch time, damn it, but here she is, it's our ladyship, the future final boss, my Sakurai, she, who was taught by the many mothers of Mad Max Fury Road, with her fists of frenzy, her calves of the crucible, her dexterous dropkick of divinity, her mighty powerful stream of strength to buff her by 30%, and her world ending elbow drop of the apocalypse and with this amazing gear i love her the colors this specific pink is my other color she's working really hard and i gotta give her credit even with her faults she challenged herself to face the final boss of mighty gold sorry and failed her effort commendable our ladyship wants to prove she's a fighter and is determined to put herself into situations where she will get struck hard now bow down your commoners eat your filthy peasant food and watch as our lady feasts on food from this a linear place where they eat balloons. There are also these two white women, you know, Zeta Steel, who died to Brazil like this, you know. Yes! Ouch! Oh my god! Ah! Respect, girl. And Milo Grace, who improved by the last show, but these two are just simple cannon fodder to be fed and destroyed like putties. But they had entertaining moments with Bozilla, with Zeta Steel being the primary reason for Bozilla's losses in her record and dying as a result. Chiaki, oh Chiaki, Chiaki has the look, she's just super cool yo, and working hard, scoring one victory in a tag match with Misa Matsui, Chiaki has a big upside, with a great spear, power, wonderful expressions, and she's improving, she was given three singles matches, including a passion injection match, to display her potential, she's just, she's just so freaking cool, nothing else going on in Mighty Gold besides just putting on performances, and getting stronger, perfectly fine, Chiaki will be someone to watch, now, for the most interesting character arc of Mighty Gold. Now, Ishikawa's quest is as old as time and argued by many philosophers of old. The quest to find herself. Now, has won zero matches, but she has given so much effort in her performances and is my favorite actress in this promotion. She is a damn good actor and portrays her character's desperation so well, I actually think she can do movies because of it. She reminds me of the original premise to the movie Yesterday. You know that movie where the guy wakes up and the Beatles don't exist, so he starts singing the Beatles? The original premise from the writer was about his frustration as a screenwriter who never sold a script after 20 years. He thought that if he woke up one day and Star Wars never existed, he could try to pitch Star Wars, and it still would not sell. That frustration of a seasoned artist who cannot get his due despite all the hard work. Another example is Salieri in Amadeus. How relatable is that, my friends? That's now Ishikawa, someone who emulated Tam Nakano, and now she is trying to find herself. But it's simply not working, and she keeps losing and losing. I love this story. It's always a simple story of the first win in a new promotion, but now Ishikawa takes it to another level of authenticity. One of my favorites in Mighty Gold, taking on Nanai Takahashi to prove her passion, but in the spot that you expect her to fight and crawl to show her lion spirit. She taps out instead, and it's simultaneously dramatic, comical, and sad. Look at her faces. She is her, 
Nanai Takahashi is performing her role exactly how it should be. A boss for the people to defeat and gain levels. Her passion injection matches are an opportunity to let a wrestler gain strength. And when in a properly mic'd ring, my main annoyance of Nanai's auditory nightmare is completely fine. And I get to actually enjoy her work. She was able to bring out some great performances from Mita Matsui, Yuzuki, and now Ishikawa, but also did a great job being the catalyst to bring Utami back to full power, leading to Io Sky. Debuting mid-season, we have the newest rookie, Komomo Minami. Always gotta have a Komomo. Komomo was supposed to debut in stardom, but seemingly pulled a Renee Zellweger and Jerry Maguire. I will go with you. Dorothy Boyd, thank you. I highly recommend you watch her debut match against Mirai. It's one of the best debuts to the point I wouldn't have known it was a debut. Her faces are expressive and she shows lots of character and depth. This simple moment of trying to get to the ropes shows so much to me. Her faces, her struggle, the pain, the drama. Joshi is great in being able to watch a new wrestler's career from the very beginning and get to watch them grow and grow and grow. And finally, the main antagonist of Mardi Gold, Sari. I don't say this freely. Sari has been perfect. Her aggression, her antagonizing of her opponents, her speed, her precision, the logical way she counters opponents, her stomps, a pure stomp. She is a true final boss to fight against, destroying opponents with five wins and one draw to Miko Ayona and Mai Sakurai. She will defeat Mai Sakurai afterwards, but still room left for a future bout with Miku and Sari. Her match with Julia is going to be such a banger. Sari's performances can do no wrong in my opinion. She is just perfect. A perfect wrestler. Sorry to Sari fans for taking so long to say that. One more time, Sari is perfect. This has been the journey thus far in Dreamstar Fighting Mighty Gold. The action is exciting, the photography is peak, the color palette is peak, the acting is peak, the cast is peak. The length of the shows works so well for me, the size of the cast makes it intimate and easy to understand. I just highly enjoy the product. Maybe that's new car smell. Time will tell. Regardless, Utami vs. Eosky is a clash of queens from different kingdoms in a way only wrestling can provide. And the fact that we're getting it in 2024 is insane and should be a memorable one. Now do cosplay Battle Royales, damn it! Please, I need it! Thank you, thank you, thank you to all my fellow Tarnas who waited for me to finish the Elder Main DLC. It's not like I took that long, honestly. But anyways, thank you all to Jeff, the Up Channel, DJs, Renee Valdez, Ace of Trace, Maddox, Justin Stein, Matthew Pelotruska, Neo Chef, Who, Terrence, Daniel, Kev, Mullen, MK, Ray, Connor, Shiki, Party Money, 520, Juggernaut, Graphics, Shutter Bingo, Dot Wave. I haven't done this in a while, wow. Aaron Zacarius, I Want Victims, JLA, Julia, Sunglasses, Chi Wall, Paul, Darn, Picklesheimer, Scott Racer, Steven Siemens, Coverture, Unscore D, Lil Choo Choo, Tony Davis, Jesse, The Outlaw, Dodge, Money Star, Doggle Snake, Impossible, Boggle, Aldo, and Lucy. Piano Arduino, thank you, all of you. Till next time. How are you?